the investigation into the death of Thomas Kingston is intensifying. On the same day, Prince William remains absent after not attending the funeral, which marks the anniversary of the death of Constantine of Greece. William has faced criticism for attending a synagogue both politically and socially due to the recent Kate Middleton affair. In regards to the police investigation into the death of Thomas Kingston, all evidence points to his father-in-law. Additionally, I have come across some important information. Let's begin with William. Last week, Prince William made a sudden statement about the Middle East conflict. Today we see him in images visiting a synagogue wearing a beret on his head. This image has made quite an impact. William read a strong editorial in a British newspaper today, which he found quite interesting. Additionally, the editorial mentioned the recent death of Thomas Kingston, the husband of William's cousin Gabriella of Windsor. I look forward to discussing this editorial with William. The editorial discussed the recent accusations of racism made by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, during their interview with Oprah Winfrey. William was understandably furious about these accusations, and the editorial likely echoed his sentiments. During an engagement, a reporter asked it a question about the accusations, causing him to break down. In response, he stated, We are not a racist family. Later, it was revealed that his godmother, Lady Susan Hussey, had asked a black guest at Buckingham Palace where she was really from. William, anxious not to be dragged into Buckley's, instructed an aide to address those claims before boarding a plane to the United States for awards. On behalf of the prince, a palace spokesperson stated that the behavior was unacceptable and emphasized that racism has no place in our society. Why talk about the Middle East now? William and Kate are understood to watch TV news together, and William is said to get Sky News updates on his phone. Like many people, and perhaps particularly millennial parents of young children as William is, he has been appalled by the latest atrocities in the Middle East, images of very strong children that seem endless. Attendees say that, like his mother before him, he feels the burden of using his platform as a member of the Eleza to make a difference. It's all part of the plan, guys. However, something more seismic is going on here as well. The source says part of a plan that William, with no time to waste, is maneuvering from being the well-meaning Duke of Cambridge championing mental health causes to someone more serious, someone that people around the world can recognize as a legitimate company king. He has only been Prince of Wales for 18 months and is now heir to a 75-year-old monarch with cancer. One look at William's office, which already craves or looks presidential, is much more than a professional office, much more that than a royal court. It shows that his outlook is somewhat along these lines, and he is in the process of hiring an executive director, while he has confirmed the appointment of Ladin Cole, Tom White, the Queen's former anecdotster, as Kate's private secretary. He wants to cast himself as a kind of global statesman, is a bit what they're hoping for. They say there are two prongs to William's ambitions, legacy and impact. And with regard to the latter, Katie Williams seems to have him in spades. I found significant one thing that they highlight, that if they say that in this sense they want to protect Kate Middleton's privacy, why wasn't the same thing done recently with Meghan Markle and probably they would have avoided this mexit, which is the separation of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, of Harry and Meghan, of all their family and of the duties of the British royal agenda. And on the other hand, they say that this shows that it was not intended to protect either Meghan Markle recently or her mother Lady Di at the time. Finally, William has wanted to talk about the death of Thomas Kingston and has limited himself to say that it is a very unpleasant matter and that he asks for respect. However, he has not justified his absence at the funeral of Constantine. Funeral. Personal reasons were personal reasons. We saw that in a statement. And that's it. Do not ask any more questions. Of course, the matter leaves us quite cold, and of course, well, in this sense, it must be said that we are missing a lot of information that William does not pretend to give. On the one hand, he wants to appear empathetic, transparent. I am with the victims of everything that is happening in the Middle East. That conflict has to stop. But nevertheless, in this sense, I am not going to say that he behaves like a dictator, because neither, but how little we are seeing about the whole issue that has to do with Kate Middleton. Such brief communiques fuel speculation, and it is no longer just those who might label us as cospernoid that are saying it here, but practically 
practically everybody. And let's move on to the second topic. The second topic has to do with the death of Thomas Kingston. I told you this morning that an investigation had been launched by the police, an inquest, and that in this sense they are looking a little bit more into the profile of this person. Yesterday, I told you in a video that there were things, well, that I still… I don't know. With the cold corpse, it was a little difficult for me to say. But, well, since they have been published, now I think I can comment on them, always with respect, but, well, I was telling you that Thomas Kingston could have a kind of double life, okay? A double life that would not be parallel to what we have been telling you about William and Kate, the Rose Hambury issue, and so on.